see every wake up to see a brand new day. Mm -hmm. I listen to brother often pray and say, God bless us. Bless us. Blessing comes in so many different forms and fashion. Mm -hmm. A lot of times they disguise and we don't realize they're blessing. Mm -hmm. But God knows how to bless. Mm -hmm. And we gotta open our minds that our minds can be broadened that we can receive whatever God has given. And so often the greatest blessing is right before us and we don't acknowledge it, we don't recognize it. And that blessing is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because without him, we are nothing. We, we are nobody. We, 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 we got to have him to be anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we exist, but without him, we are nobody. Amen, amen. And, and, and we need to make sure that we know him. We know him as Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. that he's over our lives and that we have given our life to him to protect our lives and to keep our lives. So let us make sure that we where we need to be. Because this thing is getting more serious every day. Every day we get a little bit closer to going home. He said, well, I've been hearing that a long time. Yeah, it's still true today, just like it was the day that you heard it. We're a little bit closer today than it was the day that you heard it. So let us make sure that we where we need to be. It's not a joke. It's not, a, it's not something that we get to put on and take off. Man. It's something a uh, reality. And I think so often that, that, that Satan blinds the uh, reality that we don't see it as being what it is. But let us take time out, just a little time out, and just reflect on that. That one day I got to give up this walk of life. Amen. Where would I spend eternity? <laughs> will it be heaven or will it be hell? Amen. The destination is going to be somewhere. And the choice is up to us. Amen. But we got to make it now. We can't wait till we leave here and decide where it's going to be. It's got to be determined now. And if we haven't chosen Jesus Christ to be our Lord and our Savior, then I can tell you the destination is not going to be good. It's going to be hell. So let us reflect on ourselves today, on our lives today. And if any time that you feel that you need to come and rededicate or give your life to Christ. Take that time out. Push everybody else aside and just say, hey, I need to do this right here. Because that's the most important thing that we have, is to give our life to Christ. Because our soul has got to rest somewhere. So let us, let us make sure that we have made the right decision. So I say it all, let the door of the church is open, whosoever will, let them come. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. And we give God honor this morning. And we give Him thanks and we give Him praise. Thank God for another opportunity, another day. To be in the land of living and to be able to come into the house of God. Mm -hmm. We honor God. Father, our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, our comfort and the eye, the Holy Spirit, the pastors, the governors, the God, the ministry of the officers, the mother of each and every one that takes to make this number, we give God praise. And we give God thanks for your presence mm -hmm. and allowing us to have one body again in the, in the sanctuary. I think we all have been a little set off this morning for someone who's come <coughs> to the church and stole some of the items. Let us know that the church has much work to do. Mm -hmm. Jail, jail housing full of people that steal. Mm -hmm. But to stop thieves is to get saved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If we get saved, follow the instruction that God has given us, we will find that we have a law within our own city. A law that 
they accept me. They allow me to do certain things. So, because uh, I hear Brother Alton is pray, prayer, prayer, pray, pray, so you also speak. That's what salvation is all about. It's about conversion. It's about how God takes us who are broken, who has so many different problems. There are so many things that have us bound and blinded. And God has the power to deliver, and He do deliver. And if you would look at all of the saints, they are reformed crooks. <laughs> Born again from whatever Can you probably hear what we suggest tonight? Father in heaven, we come again, Lord, and we, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come, Heavenly Father, because we see ourselves as we look. We see ourselves. We see ourselves now, Heavenly Father, because we have seen you. Heavenly Father, when we saw you, you, we saw you to be holy, we saw you to be righteous, we saw you to be one who have no flaws, no broken places, no injuries or damage or nothing that defiled. And then when we looked at you, Lord, then we saw ourselves and we saw how damaged that we was. When we saw ourselves, Heavenly Father, we began to realize why it was that Adam and Eve ran and hid in the tree. We began to see, Heavenly Father, why it was they began to clothe themselves because they were naked. We saw why they were ashamed. Heavenly Father, we saw ourselves that we could identify with we could identify with them more than we could identify with you. We come, Heavenly Father, asking you, Lord, to forgive us for all of our sins. Cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. We come knowing, Heavenly Father, without you, we are nothing. We know, Heavenly Father, without you, we are failures all together. But we know, Heavenly Father, you have sent your son. He bowed down and gushed him and he fought for us. He fought to give up his own will. That he might take on your will. And your will, Heavenly Father, was that he would go to Calvary. He took our sins to Calvary. And he nailed them on the cross. And Heavenly Father, now we are able to come and we assemble here today because of work that has been done. A work that nobody else could do. The work on Calvary, the work of dying for the sins of the world, Lord. The work has been done. And Heavenly Father, the burial took place, Lord, and, and he resurrected. The third day, and the scripture says he is the first begotten of the grave, the first begotten of the dead, the first begotten. Mm -hmm. There are many sons and, and daughters of the kingdom of God. And Heavenly Father, we have been given that right. We have been given the right to be born again. And Heavenly Father, we come today and, and we thank you for that right, Lord. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for opening up that door. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your Holy Spirit to come and dwell with us, to lead and guide and direct us. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those who are sick and, and they're shut in. Those who are locked behind prayers and walls, we pray for those, Heavenly Father, who are homeless. We pray for those, Lord, who, who, don't, who don't know you in the pardon of their sin. We, we pray for those, Lord, who 
are, are, are ready to give up on life because they feel they have no value. Oh, Heavenly Father, we pray for those, every home that is represented here and in every home, Heavenly Father, that has come under attack by the enemy. Attack designed to break up home, to, to break up families. We pray, Heavenly Father, for your restoration. And Heavenly Father, those who you put in our heart, who we know, God, we just lift them all up to you. God, we ask you to touch. And Heavenly Father, as we come and as we are simple here today, Lord, we pray for us. We pray for everyone, Heavenly Father, who, who has come into this place, Lord, because we are all, we are all in a battle. We are, we are all in a struggle. Some are struggling with one thing, and some is struggling with another thing, but God, we're in a struggle. Heavenly Father, as I, as I attempt, as I attempt, Heavenly Father, to preach your word, I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will give me the anointing I need to be able to teach, to be able to instruct, to be able to do the thing that I need to do, Heavenly Father, that we may be made better. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would go with us and stand by us. And Lord Jesus, please stand for us. We claim the victory in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing it is. to be in the land of the living and to know God. To know God as your Savior. What a blessing. To know that he has been already fixed. And for many of us who have made our profession, there's our hope in Christ. We're still struggling with certain information. And when you don't have the right information, Satan has the advantage of deception. The scripture said he comes, kill, steal, and destroy. He is one of the scriptures described him as a deceiver. It's not about the truth, it's about deception. Satan understands that he deceives us and he is able to carry us or get us to go in whatever direction that he wants us to go. I want to begin a message that I know there's no way I'll be able to finish today. And I won't do this because hopefully that the Lord will allow me to pick up if he give us next Sunday. And we'll be able to pick up and move on because I think that with great knowledge comes great power. The scripture says that, that wisdom is the principal type. He says therefore get wisdom. But it says, out of all you're getting, get an understanding. I talked about Sunday before last, I think it was, I talked about the church. Door of the church, door of the church being open. I tried to talk about what that meant. And how it don't just mean the joining a local church and coming into fellowship with that church. The church is so much bigger than that. The church is so much bigger than our little group. And you see, while we was not able to come in here and meet and fellowship, we did not cease to be the church. The 
the church continued on, or the or not, it was able to collectively come together. The separation did not have power to dominate over the church. But I want to talk about I want to talk about how we get to the church. And I may not say a whole lot about the church, but I want to talk about how we get there. And I think it's so important to understand how we get there, and once we get there, then we begin to deal with what our responsibility is, what it is that we are all about. And sometimes we can get locked into a certain mindset, a certain thought, and we can be locked into it so long and be wrong and think we're right about certain things. I don't know about you, but I did it many times. Yeah, I got this, only to find more information and realize I don't got this. And the mark of a great Christian is the mark of a person who can change. It's the mark of a person who will not become self-righteous and hold and defend a thought or an idea that is not accurate. I sent a letter the other day. I'm still old school. I ain't going I still email a little bit, text a little bit. I still write a few letters. <laughs> I sent a letter the other day. And a few days later, it came back. It said I only return to send it. <laughs> And I wonder why am I getting this back? Again, to look at how I had to address the letter. I put a nine where I should have put a zero. I thought about when my letter come back, how my little letter had circulated. I thought about how it probably went past the house. <laughs> that it was supposed to stop it. And I thought about the mail carrier was probably familiar enough with the route that they probably knew that this letter is supposed to go here. But it's not my job to change his nine into a zero. So they returned it back to me. Then I began to realize what a blessing it was. What a blessing it was to get my letter back because I missed the mark. I missed the mark. And I thought about how, how often we can miss the mark. We can have good intentions. Everything that we plan to do in Man, I don't look like I'm getting to where I was going. <laughs> Everything that we plan to do, and we have good intention, but it don't always reach that which we are planning. I thought about the scripture that says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, and turn from their wicked ways and seek my faith, then would I hear them from heaven thought about how it was that God was so specific. Oh, my Lord. How God was so specific in what he wanted. If my people, the first thing he wanted was us to ensure that we belong to him. I'm going somewhere else now. <laughs> That's all right. The first specific thing he wanted us to know that I belong to him. Mm -hmm. That I'm operating under his name. Oh my God. 
I'm operating under the name of God. God honors me under his name. I was talking to Reverend Clark the other day and I was talking to him about this. And I, and I say, it's like in your trucking business, how you ride a guy along with you and you train him. <coughs> train him. He's he not qualified yet. But you train him. And he gets off some word, he began to talk to other people, and somebody said, well, what do you work? He said, well, I work for Reverend McClurkin. I drive for Reverend McClurkin. He don't drive for Reverend McClurkin. He rides with Reverend McClurkin. He's not yet been authorized yet. He ain't got his license. He ain't got his, 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 his uh, health card. And he ain't really learned how to hold a wheel here. In other words, Reverend McClurkin is not going to authorize him to drive his truck. Man. Oh, my God. Because he's going to be illegal. Mm -hmm. He's going to be illegal. He's not going to allow him to, to drive his truck illegal. If we don't do it, if we would not allow someone to operate under our name illegal, because we know that our liabilities and the responsibilities that we may face, mm -hmm. if we're not willing to do it, why would we think God would do it? Mm -hmm. So just because I say I am under his name, I am in Christ Jesus, that don't necessarily mean that God honors me in that position. Mm -hmm. If my people, the first thing I have to make sure of that I am his people. And the only way I can be sure that I am his people, I have to come in the door the way he commands. When the door of the church is open, I have to come into that door. The way that the Lord has instructed, I have to come into that door. I have to humble myself. Because there's no way I can get through that door if I don't humble myself. Right. I talked about, a few Sundays ago, I talked about being vulnerable. It's a word. I don't know why God is taking it back to the same place. But it's a word that we don't like. It's a word that we don't like. We don't like the word being vulnerable. We don't like that word being vulnerable because it gives us the idea of the thought that we are weak. Mm -hmm. But the reality is the word just identifies us as we really are. Mm -hmm. Because the truth of the matter is we are weak. Amen. The scripture wants us to know that we are to be Vulnerable to God. Amen. That don't mean that you just let people say and do anything and you ain't got nothing to say. Yeah, you got something to say. Not about everything. I say last time I'd be quiet, but I still got something to say. Amen. And if I think what I have to say is going to mean some different, I'm going to say it. Mm -hmm. But we have to be vulnerable to God. We have to be usable to God. I talked about, and this is where I was going. I'm, I may get a little bit where I was going. I talked about a few Sundays ago how God sent Jeremiah. He sent Jeremiah down to the potter's house. He said, Jeremiah, I need you to go to the potter's house but because I got a message for Israel. I got a message for the nation and at the potter's house where you will get the information that you need to deliver this message. Oh God. I pray that when we preach that you hear. I pray that when we pre preach that you will know that we are a gift. I'm not boasting on us. 
I'm saying that because I know that I would never be up here Amen. if God hadn't corralled me in. Amen. This was not my intention. Amen. This was not my plan. Amen. God has got work for each and every one of us. Amen. And there was no way I could say yes to Christ, no to preaching. He says to Jeremiah, I need you to go down to the potter's house, and there I want you to watch him. There you should hear my word. And Jeremiah goes to the potter's house, and he watches the potter as the, as the potter is working his work on his wheel. But the scripture said that the clay was marred in his hand. I used to think that the clay was too hard. The scripture said the clay was marred in his hand that the potter could not make what he set out to make. He had one thing in mind. He had the clay on his wheel. He see in his mindset what he had set out to make. But while he was in the process of making it, it marred in his hand. I thought, well, I used to think it was too stiff that why he couldn't work it. But the Lord showed me, no, it wasn't too stiff. The clay was too weak. It had no body. It had no strength. He could not make what it was that he set out to make because the clay marred in his hand. The clay was not strong enough to do what he wanted to do. And the scripture says, so he made it again, another vessel, as it pleased him. Praise the Lord. I think about how God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. It is a story that we all know. I bet everybody in here can tell something about this story. We don't know what Ten Commandments. How God brought them out of Egypt. And he was bringing them to the promised land. A land that flowed with milk and honey. And how it is, I, I can only outline the story. I can't put in all the, 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 the details, but I can outline the story. As they went, going to where God had planned for them to go, as they went, headed toward a promise that had been made to them, and the scripture lets us know that as they come, to the border of a land that flowed with milk and honey, they run into obstacles, they run into giants. And because of their fear of the obstacles that they faced, they was not able to go in and enjoy the milk and honey. And they could not bleed. They could not believe that God could give them victory over the giants. Did y'all hear me? They could not believe that God could give them victory over the giant. Here's another problem they had. They never could get the image of Egypt out of their mind. Oh my God. God showed me. How many of us he has already delivered from the thing that you have been praying for? But it's the residue of it that still hangs on. You still see the image in your mind. And every time certain events happen, you go back. You go back to that what you come from. And all the time you have been delivered. <laughs> You have not been left in Egypt. Get out of there. Oh, my God. But in your mind, Egypt is still in you. That was what they were dealing with. 
And because they could not get rid of Egypt in them, they could not come into the promise. The milk and honey were waiting. Oh my God. It was waiting for 40 years. But they couldn't come in. And when God trained a people that could listen and that could obey, that would be courageous and say, God will give us victory. You want to know how to get victory? Become courageous and say, God will give us victory. It's not about the circumstance. Whatever the circumstance or the condition might be, say, God will give us victory. And when they came to that point where they knew that God would give them victory, they came into a land that flowed with milk and honey. They came into the land that was flowing with milk and honey. And it seemed like they had reached their destination. It seemed like we could now. But no, <laughs> they hadn't reached the destination. Because you see, the milk and honey, the good land, was just to prove that God was a God of his word. It was to prove that God is able to get you where he's carrying you, and he's able to fulfill what he said would be there when you got there. But that was not the end of the story. You see, the story was not so much about where they were going. But the story was about who, were, who they were becoming. You don't hear me? The story was about who they become. The story is not so much about where we are going. The story is about who we are becoming. Yes, heaven is home for the Christian. What do you do when you get to heaven? Oh my God. It's about where, who they are becoming. And the scripture lets us know that they began to settle. Oh, here it is, church. They began to settle for milk and honey. There are a whole church world out there. There's a church world out there that have settled for milk and honey. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about the things that God blesses us with now. And somehow or another, we get tangled up in the blessings now. And we settle for the blessings now. And when we settle for the blessings now, we settle for being something else. We sell it for being something less than what God intended for us to be. The scripture says in Exodus 19 and, and, and 6, I think it said, he said, you are a, a kingdom, a nation, a priesthood, a holy people. In other words, that was God's intention for them to come into this position to where they become a holy nation. It was not about selling for milk and honey. It was about becoming more. I pray that you hear. I pray that you hear. It's about becoming more. It's about not selling, but it's about becoming more. I remember being a young man coming into adulthood I remember me and some of my partners, we were talking about finding ourselves. We talked about finding ourselves because we didn't know where we belonged. We didn't know who we were. Oh yeah, we put on a good show, but we didn't have, have a clue as where we were. Because when we got to ourselves, we were talking about trying to find ourselves. And I realized that you can't find yourself till you find God. When I found God, I found myself. And I was thinking about that the other day, and I was thinking, Lord, I hope my partners didn't sell it. I hope they went on to find God so they could find themselves. And now we come to the point of the potter's house. The potter represented the nation of Israel. The, the, 
clay represents, excuse me, the nation of Israel. The potter represented God. And how potter is working a work, and he is building the nation. As the potter was working this work to build a certain vessel, God was working a work to build a certain nation. But just as the clay marred in the potter's hand, the house of Israel marred in God's hand. And God said, I cannot make them a kingdom that I started. I can't make them the holy nation that I started. I cannot make them a nation of, of priests as I started because they won't cooperate. Hear me, church. How important it is for us to cooperate with God. Because so often time we're waiting on the Lord and the Lord said, I need your cooperation. I need you to work with me. But the claim would not work with the potter. And the scripture so said he made it again. Another vessel. God had made Israel again. Another vessel. Why am I talking so much about Israel? Because we can't get to the church properly until we go through Israel. You've got to go through Israel to get to the church. Now we look at another <laughs> scripture that you probably don't hear very much of. It's the 19th chapter of Jeremiah. Where God says to Jeremiah, I want you to take and get a bottle from the potter's house. I want you to take that bowl, and I thought about that. That's what it turned out to be. I don't know how the shape it was supposed to be in the start with, but when the potter got done with it, it was an earthen jaw, earthen bottle. I don't know how tall it was. I don't know how short it was. I don't know about what the shape it was, but the scripture said it was a bowl. He said, I need you to take that bowl. And I need you to go and gather some of the elders of Israel. And I need you to take them with you. And I need you to go to a place where I appoint you. And when you get there, I need you to take that bottle and slam it down. I need you to take that bottle and throw it down and break it and shatter it in so many pieces that it is impossible to put it back together again. When we look at other scripture, we see that Bible got shattered under Solomon's son. Whenever Solomon broke the commands of God, God said, I'm not going to shatter the Bible under his administration, but I'm going to shatter it under his son. And when Rio Bamba took the kingdom, the nation of Israel was shattered. Amen. Amen. Now we come to the knowledge when we speak of the lost tribes of Israel, because the bottle is shattered and it's spreading all over the world. God shattered the bottle. He said, there's no way to put this bottle back together again. But all the time, he had a plan. He was shattering one piece to build another. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes we said Israel is God chosen peoples, but it would never just be about them. Mm -hmm. It would never just be about one group of one ethnic group of people. It was about every nation. It was about every kindred. And it was about every tongue. And when God shattered the bottle. And we, as I said, I can't go through the whole story, but we see in the midst of the shadow body, Jesus Christ was born. While the bottle was shattered, Jesus Christ was born and he come and he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is his hand. In other words, he is saying, the only way this bottle can ever be put back together again I'm the only possible one to do it. Mm -hmm. But they rejected it. 
They rejected it. His kingdom, they rejected his coming. They rejected his message. They rejected everything that he had to say. They rejected who he was being. Oh yeah, they loved the miracles. Oh my. See, the miracles is the milk and honey for the church. Oh my God, y'all hear me. The meals that we sit and eat when we say fellowship, that's the milk and honey of the church. The fact that God blesses us under his reign, that's the milk and honey. And the sad thing about it, many of us in the church have settled for milk and honey just like they did back then. And the scripture said the thing that happened to them happened for an example so we would follow in the same footsteps Amen. and fail in the same way Amen. that they fell. So I'm saying to us, we have to check ourselves because this is not where we're going. Amen. This is just where we are Amen. right now. God has a greater plan mm -hmm. than this. God has a greater purpose than this. Don't you know if he is a creator, he never stopped creating? <clears throat> they <laughs> begin to sell for milk and honey. And when they begin to sell for milk and honey, they begin to live a life that God cannot sanction. Oh my God. God could not sanction the life that they were living. Do you ever hear somebody say, well, I'm a Christian, but I ain't no saint? You are a Christian in trouble. <laughs> oh, my God. God has to be able to sanctify you. He had, let me show you something. God wants to sanctify everything about you. Amen. He wants to sanctify your home. He wants to sanctify your relationship. He wants to sanctify you in your work, on your job, whatever you are doing and whoever. It's about God's sanctification. Why? Because it's not just about being a church member. It is about being a part of the kingdom that is in, 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 in being building right now. While the first kingdom rejected God, you see, the closest they ever come was, was to David. But David could not control himself. He could not handle the lust. He had lust for women that he couldn't control. And because he couldn't control his lust for women, he couldn't control his heart for murder. Oh, my God. And Solomon had a greater lust from him. David had a few women. Solomon had about five or six hundred. Oh, my God. But what I'm saying, the kingdom for them couldn't materialize. It couldn't materialize for them because the same way the sacrificial system didn't work. It had a perfect system, a good system, with flawed peoples. David was the greatest king that the nation had ever seen, but he was a flawed man. The kingdom was not supposed to, if it would have ran right, have to run on the earthly kingdom. Because the Lord was their king. He was the one that was leading and guiding them. But we, they said, we want a king like he, everybody else. And any time you put a man over something so great, <laughs> oh, Lord, you been fall. <laughs> it ain't going to work. And Jesus Christ came. And he introduced himself to the and said that the kingdom of heaven is hand. And as I said, they rejected the kingdom. And then what did he do? He said, I will build my church upon this rock. And the heaven and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I'm going to have to cut off here in a minute. The gates of hell will not prevail against my church. Why? 
Can the gates of hell not prevail against the church? Why is it so impossible? Listen to what I'm saying, people. Because the church is not an earthly system. The church is not an earthly system. There is nothing that operates and runs a church override the information that comes from heaven. The church is born of the Spirit. Do you remember what Jesus said? When the devil said, if you are the Son of God, turn this rock into bread. It is written that man don't live by bread alone. Bread don't help him over here. <laughs> but if he's going to live, he's going to have to live by the word of God. Amen. You see, because life is not dependent upon bread. Life is dependent upon the word of God. And the church is not a earth-born thing. It has been made to become that. Oh, my God. It has been made to become earthly things. We've got all the seminaries, all the schools of divinity, and I'm not knocking if anybody wants to go to them, but I'm telling you, you are not going to get saved through the system. Do you know why? Think about this. And I'm, I'm, I'm going all over the place, and I realize that. But think about what the scripture talks about the beast and how we get stuck on one beast. But the scripture talks about another beast. Beast that rises up out of the earth. And who is this beast? He's a, he is a false prophet. He teaches false things. He corrals many people and get many people to follow and believe him, but he's false. And the reason why the scripture says he comes up out of the earth because he is an earthly. You remember what God said to Peter? Blessed are thy Simon Bar for her, for flesh and blood. The earth didn't reveal this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. It was what came down from heaven. That's what I'm building on. That's what God is building us on. He's building us on his word. He's building us on his spirit. And I know this Christian life is a battle. I know it's hard. I know you get knocked down time and time and time and time again. And I know some of us get stuck. Just like the children of Israel got stuck. They got stuck with milky honey. They got stuck with good things. See, you don't only get, always get stuck with bad stuff. You get stuck with good stuff too. <laughs> some of us are stuck in things we enjoy. Ooh, I, I know I need to do, but I'm stuck over here. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I'm enjoying myself. <laughs> But what I'm trying to say is that God has us on the move. And the church is more than what you see. A matter of fact, you can only see the fruits of the church. Amen. You can't see the church until it's time. Until it's time that we've got, we've got to reveal it. Invisibility. Did I get a subject? I guess I didn't mean that. <laughs> <laughs> but what it was going to be, the kingdom of God in the church. Because as I say, I know I won't finish this today. But if God so permits, we'll move on. We'll move on a little farther the next time he allows us to come together. Amen. Amen. I encourage you. I encourage you to know your value. And that value is in Christ. Let me go back and say this. I got I to go on over. Let me say this. I was talking about sanctification. Do you know what <coughs> sanctification is? Sanctification is God's approval. To be sanctified. 
That's what I'm saying because it's a word that scares off many Christians. I ain't no saint, but I'm a Christian. Sanctification is God's approval. Do you remember in Genesis where God created the heaven and the earth? What he did? He worked one day <coughs> work, and then he looked at it and said, that's good. <laughs> he sanctified it. He worked another day, he said, mm, that's good too. And he went on. <laughs> For six days, and when he got done, he looked it all over together and said, it's good and very good. I have done this work, and I have sanctified it. There ain't nothing wrong with it. That's why the devil cannot prevail against the church. Because God says through Christ my son, I have done this work and I sanctify it. I sanctify the cross. I sanctify the garden. I sanctify everything my son went to. I sanctify the grave. I sanctify the resurrection. I sanctify everything I have sent him to do. There ain't nothing wrong with it. I sanctify the new birth that every one of my people will come into the reality of. The new birth has been sanctified. This is why, this is why we just can't get in no other way. This is why we just can't say, well, I ain't going to worship nobody else. That's fine. But it ain't, God can't sanction it. I could preach all day. I know y'all be on the Y'all be on stone with me like they're trying to. <laughs> y'all. <laughs> I hope and pray to God that we are here what the Lord is saying. Because if I had any thought in my mind that the Lord wouldn't use me, I would not do it. God sends people to you as a gift. He gives you people in your lives as a gift. He says to Israel, I sent you prophets and I sent you messengers. He said, you slayed the prophets and you stoned the messengers. And then he said, your house is left to be desolated. You remember? Oh my God! I, have I got any Bibles do to see here? I want y'all to study. I want y'all to study. Get it because this is this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to outline some things before you can fill in some blanks when you study. Just do, just 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 do, little God. Just just do. And if you got questions, ask them. Don't be afraid to ask for it. One of the hooks that the Satan gets up on us is the fact that we feel ashamed to ask for it. We feel ashamed to say, I don't know. When God looks at me, you know what he says? He has to say anything. That's the dumbest preacher I got. He always talking about what he don't know. <laughs> Did y'all get that? Every time he prays, he's talking about he don't know. Every time he comes to me, he gets pitiful. <laughs> I'm glad to be pitiful. Because, see, when I know, I was making a mess. One of these days, I'm going to tell y'all some of the mess I made. <laughs> the Holy Ghost got to leave. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Ghost don't leave, and I ain't telling you nothing. <laughs> Skeletons in my closet that I don't want out. Amen. Yeah, anybody ever got y'all want y'all out? Mm -hmm. well, I got some. Amen. Hey, that's some room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Amen. Yeah. 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 Praise God. I hope and pray that the word of God has been a blessing to you. Hope you hear it, you accept it for what it is. And I know it's a lot. But just get a little piece of it and work on it. Think about it. Think about it.
And a lot of God, a lot of God did many because he definitely, he definitely did. That was a very good and we stand, I want to, again, the purpose of all the extended meditation, I want to make sure that we know that that invitation is continuing to be extended because it's not just coming into the church, but it's about coming into the kingdom. Heirs, 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 and joint heirs with Christ. Father had sent me so that I sent you air and then the Lord Christ. That's, 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 that's God's purpose. This guy here, Father in heaven, we come again for thanksgiving in our hearts. Bless the Lord. We come more in heaven, Father, that the words that we have spoken and the words that you have given. You know, Heavenly Father, that your word will never go out and return to the Lord. We know, Lord, that it will accomplish the mission where we have sent. Mm -hmm. Lord God, we know this morning that you have sent your word. Your word, Heavenly Father, for us to thank God. Your word for us to move over. Your word, Lord, that we might look at our own lives and carry the word to ourselves. Heavenly Father, He has sent us to be convicted. And when we are convicted, Heavenly Father, it is designed to heal us. Mm -hmm. Sent to us to be encouraged. Mm -hmm. Encourage us to go forward where we have found ourselves falling short. Mm -hmm. It is designed, Heavenly Father, to strengthen. Strengthen us in our journey, to strengthen us in our travel, strengthen us in our battle in this life. To remind us, Lord, that life here is a short thing. But it don't end at the graveyard. It don't end at the cemetery. Amen. To remind us, Lord, that when this door closes, mm -hmm. another door opens. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. When we walk through that door, Lord, that Oh my God. Rejoice it. Yes. When we walk through that door, Lord, there is nothing, nothing to be able to touch us. All right. Nothing will be able to break us down. Nothing will be able to injure us. Nothing will be able to break us again. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, and the plans you have for us, as we go forward, Heavenly Father, we we cannot imagine what heaven holds. Amen. We know, Heavenly Father, that you are a creator that never stops creating. Therefore, Lord, you are building people to work in your plans of creation. And we get the praise and we get yeah. the thank you, Lord, because we don't know where we might land in that. Thank you, Father, that you have allowed us to be a part. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. You have allowed us mm -hmm. to be a part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you bless every one of your people. Yes. All that is upon the sound of my weak voice, I, I pray, God, that you sing them out. Sing them each one out, Heavenly Father, in your own private room, in your own private council. Yes. And touch them in the way, Lord, that they need touching. And wherever they need healing, Heavenly Father, to heal them. Yes. And help them to know, Heavenly Father, help us all to know that healing starts in our mind. Yes. And help us to know, Heavenly Father, help us to know of the thing that you have already healed us from. Yes. And the residue still haunts us. The residue still holds us back. Oh, God bless. According to your loving kindness, according to your tender love mm -hmm. and your mercy. Yes. We claim the victory mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Count it is already done mm -hmm. in the right. precious name of Jesus. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and dead, buried and arisen Savior. May the sweet, 
with communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest, room, bow to us till we shall meet again. And let us all sing. Amen. Amen.